Cooking with Kenny and Kyle is brought to you by Damon Diodati, Certified Public Accountants, your tax experts. Available at 781-924-5684. And Tiny and Sons Auto Glass. Tiny and Sons can be reached at 781-826-6163. Kenny and Kyle. I'm Kenny DeMonte. And I'm Kyle Harney and welcome to our show here. We're going to be ma- doing something special today. We're going to be making a birthday cake. And my birthday was two days ago and I turned 50. So, uh, Kenny, you had your birthday in July, right? Yeah, well, a week ago t- on January 20th was Paul Stanley at Kiss's 67th birthday. That's a bit of kiss Yeah. All right, so this, this cake we're making is, is wicked easy, okay? It's a Duncan Heights cake mix and a cup and a quarter of water, and that's it. Um, and then you bake it for 38 minutes in an oven that's been preheated to 350 degrees. So, let's get started. Okay, Ken? Yes. Yeah, I'm going to hand you this festive um, spatula. spatula. Yes, I wish spatula meant more things. It's such a fun word to say. Well, SpongeBob SquarePants uses, uses a spatula for the crabby kind of the crusty crab in Bikini Bottom. Hmm. And this year, he'll be celebrating his 20th anniversary, born in 1999. Unfortunately, his creator, Steve Hillenberg, passed away last year. That's true. That's true. All right, so I'm going to pour the water in, and I want you to start stirring like a thing bewitched. Like stirring a cauldron? Well, more brisk. Like a witch's brew? More brisk than a cauldron. Let's see what we got here. Brisk was the name of an iced tea. Yes, it was. It was, oh, no, it was, it was a brisk tea, wasn't it? Let's see, yeah. we a little hand here. We're getting a bit faster, so. I can get a little help here. Oh, yeah, well, that's my job. <laughs> okay, so you just mix this together until it all gets nice and smooth. And frothy. And frothy, yes. Smooth and frothy, that's how they describe me. Really? No. Anyway, so what's going on in your life, Kenny? You got anything coming up that you want to plug? Well, tomorrow... I- Afternoon. There'll be a talent show here at the village at the solo, at the Shine Goat Center, you know, the, the Ray Assembly Hall they have there. And you're going to be doing what talent? What I'm talent going to be singing be Jesse's Girl by Rick Springfield. Well, the number one hit for him in 1981, and he won a Grammy Award for the song. Did he really? Yeah. He was big when I was in Lincoln High School, you know. Yeah, I Everyone was in my wanted his hair I was in my teens, you know, and before that, in 1973, he started the animated series. Mission Magic. Really? Yeah, and he had a hit song called Speak to the Sky. I don't remember any of that. I must have been asleep that year. Well, you weren't born yet, probably. Well, I don't know. I was born in 1969. Well, that show only came out four years later. I was six no, years old. I wasn't old. watching much TV then. Well, I was six years old when it came out in 73, you know. Golly. Yeah, it was a very... Magical show. Rick would have his guitar and his songs and music videos, cartoon style, you know. Did he bake a cake? Because that's what we're going to do. No. Um, <laughs> so you he had, had a blue owl named Ptolemy on his shoulder. Really? He was dressed in a white jumpsuit. That's the, how wait, Rick... the, wait, the owl was wearing a jumpsuit? No, Rick was. Oh, okay. Rick was. Well, I just wanted to make sure. So wait, we're going to pour this into the cake pan, and then we're going to put it in the oven, and magic will happen, but not white jumpsuit magic. Mission magic. Mis- not mission magic. Not, we don't have any uh, Rick Springfield in here. Well, actually, the magic was a school well, teacher named Miss Tickle, a redhead, you know, with, with square glasses, you Ms. know. Miss Tickle? A, yeah, a redheaded teacher with, who had magic power. And she had a, a What green, kind of magic power did she have? Well, she had this ring on her finger, and she could use it on her green stone cat, Tutta, and turn him and turn her into a real orange and black cat, you know. And, and did that come in handy? Yeah, because uh, Miss Tick would pick up a piece of chalk on her blackboard and draw a vertical rectangle, and it would turn into a, ma- a real door, a magic one, and it opened by itself, and she and her students, known as the Adventurers Club, would be pulled into it, and off they go on to adventure. And what oh, kind of they always meet up with Rick and his like, Ptolemy, it sounds and like, Rick would do so. It sounds like just being in Miss Tickle's class would be an adventure. Yeah. Well, so this is what your um, cake will look like um, uh, when you... Um, Mix the batter all together, and then we put it in an oven for 38 minutes. 
Thank you, Kenny. You're a gentleman. Okay, Go ahead. Into the oven. Just be careful you don't burn yourself. I don't want to. Nobody wants to do and that. In it goes. Ta-da. And let's see, we're going to set the timer here for 38 minutes. da 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 oh, I went too far. That's too fast. Back. Right there. Ta -da! Okay. Cooking with Kenny and Kyle is brought to you by Damon Diodotti, certified public accountants. Your tax experts. Available at 781 924 5684. And Tiny and Sons Auto Glass. Tiny and Sons can be reached at 781 826 6163. It just so happens that we actually have a cake pre made, and we're can, so we can skip right to the decorating part, okay? That's the fun stuff, right? It's an angel food cake. Yes, it is. Oh. Liz, would you believe in the, um, you're the greatest tribe out when the boy was working out for the decathlon, Lucy said about the weights tribe out was lifting, what's so great about lifting two angel food cakes? <laughs> <laughs> she didn't understand they were weights. She's a very negative presence on that show, don't you think? Well, she always Charlie's called Charlie around a blockhead and she always pulled the football away from him. No, and she was his psychiatrist. Exactly. Now, she had a psychiatric a, book, which was like a, a lemonade stand. Yeah, and I don't think you should ever trust a psychiatrist who practices out practices outdoors. Yeah, and she always wanted nickels from Charlie Brown. I know, and she was all into the money part of it. And then but she said what she really wanted was real estate. Elias which always, me, I'm a realtor, by the way. And Lias always <laughs> called her crabby and well, he and was she right. always leaned against Schroeder's piano and wanted him to wanted him to be her boyfriend, but all he loved was Beethoven I and know. classical music. He had a closet full of busts of Beethoven and another closet full of little toy pianos. Yeah, he didn't want to have anything to do with her. And I can't, can you blame him? She's just, like I said, she's just negative. Yeah, and uh, Charlie Brown's sister Sally was always in love with Lias, calling him her sweet baboo. Oh, my sweet baboo. Well, but all he cared about was that security blanket of his. I know, he would hold it over his shoulder and suck his thumb. These children were all like, dis they, they were d disturbed. They, it was like a terrible Yeah, disturbed. Charlie Brown had trouble winning ball games, you know, and So he goes to a, a psychiatrist kite. who happens to be the same person who pulls the football away from him. Yeah, well... It's like she's creating business for herself. Actually... People don't know this, but Charles Schultz did let Charlie Brown kick the football one time. And then what happened? Well, what happened it was... It was the end of his career. Well, actually, what happened was <laughs> Snoopy made him invisible, and Lucy couldn't see him doing it. This was in the anime special. It's magic, Charlie Brown. Well, we have a magic theme happening today on this show. So when you put the icing on, you just want to make sure you don't smoosh the cake too much, you know, so... And it's going to look lovely here in just a moment, and then we're going to add some... Some spectacular detail, right, Ken? Exactly. All you can do is your best. And you can never put too much icing on anything. Right, really? Ken? Well, that's what you, I imagine that would be your philosophy, right? I suppose. If you had, if you had to have a philosophy that involved icing. Yeah, frosting. Well, that's also called. Yeah, that's true. That's the icing on the cake. The old phrase. Amen to that. That's exactly correct. So you were telling me that. A lot of things happened the year I was born. It's 69. Right. So what are some of the things that happened in 1969 that you want to have to share with our viewing public? Well, for instance, it was, there was the moon landing with Neil Armstrong and Edwin Buzz Alwyn for their spaceship, the e saying the eagle is landed. And uh, the Woodstock Rock Festival took place. Jimi Hendrix was there doing our national anthem on his guitar. Is that one that was? Okay. Many artists were there that year, and also uh, the Beatles released Abbey Road, featuring their songs like Come Together and Here Comes the Sun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, Wendy's Restaurant, you know, with, with, for old-fashioned hamburgers, because their burgers are square, you know. Yeah, like they used to have in old-fashioned times. Yeah, and uh, Dave Thomas was their founder. Yes. I saw him many times on TV. Yes, he was on a lot. He didn't even have pigtails. Yeah, Wendy did. Yeah. That was his daughter's name. Yeah. So he named the restaurant after her. He did. And uh, TV shows like Sesame Street, The Brady Bunch, and Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? will celebrate their 50th anniversary this year. Mm -hmm. Recently, the kids from the show, who are all grown up now, sold the Brady Bunch's house from the 70s. They did for $1.4 million. And it looks nothing like it does on the show inside in real life. 
on DVD I have Mission Magic and and also uh, from 72 I have their animated series The Brady Kids. You have is that the one where they sang American Pie? No. This will be the day that I die. No. <laughs> they do me and you and a dog named Boo and also a Keep On and Sunshine Day. Do they do the one where um, Peter's voice is changing? Well, that was in the time to change. Well, that was in the live action show, The Brady Bunch. Yes. That was when it was just, they would just call it a show because, you know, they didn't have to tell people that it was live action. They kind of picked that up. Just for Filmation was the company that released the cartoons of The Brady Kids and Mission Magic. And also before that, there was The Groovy Ghoulies and Sabrina the Teenage Witch and The Archie Show. Sabrina the Teenage Witch was around with the Bra when the Brady Kids were on cartoon? Seems like that show Actually, came out she came out in 70. Their show mm. came out in 72. Wow. Archie came out in 68 and 69, you know, when the Archie's had the number one song on the chart, Sugar Sugar, in 69. Sugar, song by a guy named Ron Dante. Oh, I thought it was Davy Jones. No, he's the monkeys. The monkeys. Okay, I get all these animals confused. See, you I mean, you got these singers confused. No, animals, singers, they're kind of the same thing. Yeah, well... Have you ever eaten with one? No. <laughs> they're like animals. What I'm saying is... <laughs> in the animated series Brady Kids, they had four pets. They had a dog named Mop Top, a Ping, Ping and Pong the Pandas, and Marlon the Magic Minor Bird. The little bird could talk, and he could use his wings to cast magic spells, and he his tail tail feathers like the propellers of a helicopter to fly. You know, I feel that our childhood did not prepare us well for real life. I mean, I did not experience any magic or quicksand at all in my life. But well, I, mean, I was worried about quicksand when I was a kid, and I thought magic was everywhere, which it kind of is. Yeah, well, I remember them in the magicians like Doug Henning and David Copperfield. Well, yeah, he had that rainbow on his shirt, Dave, uh, Doug Henning did. It's, like, it's an illusion. Well, David Copperfield made a two-ton jet airplane vanish, and he made the Statue of Liberty yeah. disappear. And Which, he... I don't know how he did that. Yeah, it's all illusions, you know. Yes, yeah, well, hopefully, because otherwise we'd like, you know, why don't you give us our statue He back? was around long before we had Penn and Teller. They're funny. Yeah, one of them doesn't speak. And I got Ooh. them, you know, on my I DVD of feeling. Fantasia 2000, yeah. the sequel to the original Fantasia. I didn't know they made a sequel. Was yeah. it any good? Yeah, my mom and I saw it at the theater before I got it on, long before I got it on DVD. You know what I went and saw recently? What? Mary Poppins Returns. I did too. Did you like it? I loved it. I thought it was wonderful. I, they did I, the, the thing when they went in the bathtub? Yeah. And then they were all floating around in the, that was amazing. Well, I don't, on videotape I have the original Mary Poppins starring Julie Andrews and Dick Van Dyke at yeah. my mom's house. What I'm saying is, that film won five Academy Awards, including Best Actress and for Julie Andrews and Best Song, Chim Chim Cherie. Mm -hmm. The same year the Beatles starred in their first movie, A Hard Day's Night, 1964. So that year means this year, Mary Poppins and A Hard Day's Night will celebrate their 55th anniversary. Wow, they're older than me. Only a year later, in 65, Julie would star in the sound, Andrews would star in the sound of music, and the Beatles would star in Hell. I what a coincidence. That movie. I know. It's like they like like they went they had the same agent or something. Well, they're both from England, you know. Well, I know that's well they probably only have one agent over there then. Yeah. Brian Epstein was days. their manager. Yeah, but did well, they he call did... him the Fab Four. They did. And girls would scream uncontrollably whenever they the, saw them. They go out of their minds, you know, they're crazy about them. That's women for you. Just think of when they appear when <laughs> on the Ed Sullivan show in back in the sixties. I know you couldn't even hear them sing because the girls were screaming so much. I could hear him scream. Yeah, I mean, I, sing. Yeah. I mean, sing. I could hear him sing. It's a fine line, isn't it, Ken? Yeah, well. So here we've iced the cake. It's got a little bit of a depression in the middle because it's depressed because it's turning 50. Um, <laughs> but um, in reality, it's on a dinner plate. So it's, if you should put it on a larger charger if you have one um, so you can uh, so it'll present well. Okay. Uh, so there's the icing portion of our exciting show here. So I'm going to do some piping. How does it grab you? What does it mean? It means um, I put this little tip on here, and I'm going to do a little decoration on the cake. Sounds good to me. OK. That's what I wanted it to sound. So I worked. it worked out beautifully. So 
Actually, Sounds... I, I used to be a cake decorator many, many moons ago because my grandfather was a baker and he taught me how to do it. Yeah, well... He made fancy stuff, though. Like, yeah, well, the Brady Kids were a band, too, and they did songs in their episodes. Music, cart music videos, cartoon style. That know. conversation like took MTV a turn Like cartoon there. style. Okay, so here's how you do the piping. It's, this is really simple, actually. You're just going to go like this. You apply pressure. It's red. Yes, it is. Nothing gets past you, Kenny. Nothing does. So you can like make like little. You can do it in short spurts, or you can do it all solidly. But I think we're gonna do like little short spurts, so we have like a little bit of a detail to it. Sounds good to me. It'll taste good to you too. I'm sure. Okay. So just apply even pressure. You want to try, Ken? All right, I'll give it a shot. Okay. So you just squeeze very, very slowly. And then drag it along as you squeeze. You have to put a lot of pressure on it. You can't mess it up. It's icing, folks. So the worst thing that happens is you have icing. Well, that's not bad. I did my best. No, you can take it from here. Okay, thank you. Fill up that spot there. Oh, of course. I would hate for it to be incontinuous. Yeah, you're more experienced than I am. Well, not only at this, maybe, but there's plenty you do that I can't even imagine doing. Yeah, well, I have all this knowledge of entertainment. You do? Yeah, and uh, lately I've been watching TV game shows on Buzzer, like Match Game and Ooh, Card, match game. Sh card Sharks yeah. and Press Your Luck. Oh, you oh. know what I was going to tell you? And I promised my little brother, Dougie, that I was going to work this into the show. I have a joke for you. Yeah. What what do you get when you mix a brown chicken and a brown cow? What do you... I don't know. Brown chicken, brown cow. <laughs> oh, I couldn't possibly <laughs> think of the answer. <laughs> we, was, were, we were sharing jokes before we came on camera today. Well, I'm good at telling jokes. Riddles start. Give me a good one. Why was the baby strawberry worried? Why? Why was the baby strawberry worried? Because his mother and father were in a jam. I did these, <laughs> I did these jokes when we had a talent show back in, back in 2010. I have it on DVD. Really? Yeah, it was a comedy routine for me. And Did you dress up like Fozzie Bear? No. I know, I wore a nice sweater, you know, my nice long sleeve, red long sleeve shirt, you know, and mm -hmm. had my sleep, my hair sleeve back with gel, you know. Well. And then I performed the Carpenter's song, Superstar. That's an interesting combination of talents. Yeah. Okay, and so we got the most of the top down. We're going to do another one along the bottom, too, I think. What I had the Carpenters yesterday once more on Vowel Records. Really? Yeah, because it was advertised on television. Record, do you have a record player? Yeah. Okay. A stereo, a phonograph. Oh, I've seen it. It's on top of your dresser. Yes, I've seen it. It also has a radio and it plays cassettes and compact discs. It does it all. Yeah. It's like us. We do it all. That's pretty good. You like that? Not bad at all. Now I'm going to do one on the bottom, too. Hope you have enough frosting. Me, too. Because it would be awful if I got like partially, partly the way around and I didn't have the whole thing covered, right? The whole cake covered. The whole cake covered. Anything can happen. But it's a birthday cake, so there'll be some level of forgiveness, I think, in my... If I don't do it quite right. In your what? If I don't do it quite right. My, your vocabulary? Considering it's my... Yeah, yeah, my vocabulary. <laughs> can you or something else? I've missed you. I've Did missed you? you very much, Kyle. I'm very fond of you. One of the nicest guys I've ever known. Well, thank you, sir. We make a great team. I know, and you left me a, the cutest voicemail message on my phone. I did? You did. It was just adorable. What did I say? Well, you said you wanted to do the show again, and I said, okay, great. Sure. And here we are. Yeah. Back in the, back in the kitchen again. You mean back in the saddle again. Oh, Some by Aerosmith, you I know. don't feel that I'm wearing a saddle. Sitting in one. Yeah, but I'm not sitting in one either. I'm in the kitchen with you. Right. I could call you Dinah. I've been I've been on a horse it. before, you know, when I was a kid. So have I. Yeah. What was your horse's name? I don't remember. Really? But I do remember wearing a Saturday Night Fever t-shirt, you know. Very cool. Long before I got the album on vinyl record, you know. Featuring the music of the Bee Gees and starring John Travolta's disco dancer Tony Monero. Yeah, he Only... was something else. And Donna, and Donna, what was her name? Donna... 
Pascal? Yeah. With a little peplum on her dress, I remember. And that white leisure suit he wore became a fashion trend. Every guy wanted to wear it. I had one. I think I wore it on the night of my first communion. Sounds good. So we're going to put these letters on. These are simple. If you can't figure these out, then you should just get away from the kitchen now and stay away from the kitchen. These are pretty simple. Okay. Very tiny. They are very tiny, but it's all right. It's the thought that counts. Yeah, and uh, I noticed that the colors of Kiss, you know, red for Gene Simmons, purple for Paul Stanley, blue for Ace Fraley, and green for Peter Chris. Ooh, who just turned 67? Paul Stanley did. Oh, Paul Stanley. I get them confused. Yeah. On April 27th, Ace Fraley will turn 68. He was born in 51, like Paul Stanley was born in 52. I see. In They're August, getting up there, aren't they? Yeah, on August 25th, Gene Simmons will be 70. And on uh, December 20th, Peter Chris will be 74. That's old. Yeah, he's the oldest member of the band. Paul Stanley's the youngest. In fact, Kiss are, are currently doing their End of the Road tour, and I'll be going to see them live in March. Where are they, where are they going to be appearing? The TD Garden in no, in, in Boston. Boston. Yeah. Used to be known as the Teeny Bank North Garden. So this is a little trick I wanted to share with you guys. When you put the letters on, if you want to center them, start with the middle letters and then work your way um, out. And that way you won't end up with, like, birthday being all sideways, you know. So, because um, you, you've all fallen for that when you've done that when you're trying to make a poster. You think, oh, big B. And then, you know, by the time you, you, know, you get to the Y, you're shoving letters together and all that. So You're really good at this. You know what? It's odd, isn't it? Yeah, it's a You talent. know what else I'm good at? I'm really good at sharpshooting. I found that out when I was in the Navy. I, I was like, how could I be good at sharpshooting? I've never even picked up a gun before. And there you have it. I was... Brad Haven Hart had that wrestling move, the sharpshooter. Okay. It was his trademark, you know. All right, He's let's... been the WWE champion, the Aircon champion, the tag team champion. He's done it all. He's a champion. Yeah, he was. There was a friend of mine who went to a high school, the and that was... That was their, their mascot was, a champ, was the champion. And I was like, well, how are the champions doing? Oh, they're zero and 10. Oh, that's not so good. Okay, what let's... I'm saying is he called himself the excellence of, of execution. And also said he, he was the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. Well, it sounds like he's got a lot of confidence. Yeah, he did back then. Then what happened? He lost. Yeah, well, he was loose to breath. Brett and Hopper. Yeah, well, he was loose to breath. Freddie Hart was loose to the heartbreak kid Shawn Michaels, you know. And, hmm. and he well, wasn't W champion anymore, and he would go to WCW. Here, I'm going to have you help me with these crazy candles. All right. We'll just stick them about. There's not room to do all 50 on my cake, so we'll just... We do, don't have that many. We'll do one for each uh, decade, maybe, and then some uh, single... Anyway, these, are, these are fun. You know, no birthday cake is complete without candles, so... Yeah. The only thing we don't have for this party is ice cream. I know. I knew you were going to mention that, and I was going to pick some up, but then I thought, you know, I'm in late. I'm running late already, so. Actually, speaking of decades, I have this collection of trade paperbacks, a special kind of comic books called the Archie Americana series, best of the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. I even have book two versions of it as well. Well. It's, it tells you about all the different... Uh, Styles of music and things people did that that came out in those particular decades. Like in the forties, there was jazz and swing and big band kind of music. And bebop. Don't and, forget bebop. Yeah, unfortunately, though, it was the time of the Second World War. Yeah, I know, but they had great music. Yeah, everybody wanted to dance and, to it. You know, I'd and seen permanent lipstick. And I'd seen guys in tuxedos and women in pretty dresses, you know, and yeah. having drinks and smoking cigarettes, you know, out and dancing. <laughs> I know they were sophisticated back then, weren't they? Careful with the fire, you know. I know I don't Gene want to Simmons was known to breathe fire and drew blood and kiss concert since the seventies. That is disgusting. It was his trademark. Yeah. Now, see, I happen to like when the wax drips on the can on the cake. That's just me. I'm a little odd. <laughs> I also like when you have like cake and ice cream so that it mixes together, you know, there's like, um, you know, the mixture of the cold ice cream and the hot cake. It's like On PBS Kids, there's the Odd Squad. That show's a hilarious. Bunch of, bunch of kids and Seuss and Ty. I know. They don't smoke. That one didn't lie. No, it didn't. I see that. 
But that's okay. I've got a whole box of matches. Yeah. This is going to be a very filmic ending, you know, from which we set the smoke alarms off. This there is the go. most daring we've ever been on camera, Kenny. I'll say we have. We're very crazy that way. Just be careful you don't burn yourself. I know, I don't want to, especially on camera. Well, you're dripping some wax on the game. I know, that's all right, though. A little wax never killed anybody. You got it. Bombs kill people, not wax. Yeah, <laughs> they, they make people's faces dirty, you know. And that's, I know what bombs can do. Yeah, candles don't do that, as a rule. And that's kind of like not letting everyone know. There's always one troublemaker in the crowd. Okay, folks, so this is our, our birthday cake. And we want to thank you for watching us today. Uh, so from uh, Cooking with Kenny and Kyle, this is a happy birthday cake. I'd say. I agree completely. And since it's my birthday, I get to blow out the candles. So you want me to go blow the candles? Make a wish first. Okay. Yay for me. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching. I'm Kyle Harney. And I'm Kenny Domonte. Thank you for watching Cooking with Kenny and Kyle. Thank you very much. <laughs>